Amen. And um, although Peter, I, I just got to be honest about this this particular passage today. I find it very difficult when I am confronted with difficult people. Um, sometimes I retaliate. Sometimes I retreat. And especially those in authority. Um, it's hard. But then the Lord begins to show me something. It's only hard when you're not in the spirit. All right? It's possible to be around difficult people and maintain your testimony. All right? That's what we've been talking about here. This, this royal priesthood that we're a part of, we're part of the royal family. And I, I, want, I want you to understand where I'm going today. We have to be careful that we're not reacting like the world. Knowing that you're royalty. He says we're part of this royal family. We are a chosen race. Amen. Now he shifts from submitting to governing authorities to a place where we spend most of our time. That is in the workplace. So meet me at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 18. Because we already did 13. He talks about submitting to every human institution. I'm going to read from the NASB today. Um, he says, servants, be submissive. Those are fighting words for some of us. Be submissive to your masters. Hold on now. With all respect. Now, one third of the people at this time were enslaved. And much more Christians were being put into slavery at this particular time when this was written. One third of society were in slavery. So slavery didn't start in Africa. Amen. It started in the biblical times. So one third of the society was enslaved and Christians were being put into slavery like more than society. In other words, the people in, in at this particular time, the governing authorities, they hated Christians because of the light that they let out. Amen. Yeah, watch this. He says, so so let me read so now that you have that context, let me read again. Servants be submissive to your masters with all respect. Right? Not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who act a fool, unreasonable. For this finds favor, if for the sake of conscience toward God a person bears up, under sorrow when suffering unjustly. For what credit is it, is there, if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it? You expect that, right? With patience. You know when you sin, you get punished, you endure it with patience, right? You know I messed up. But he says, but if when you do what is right, and suffer for it. You patiently endure it. This. See, if we really read the Bible, y'all. This. 
finds favor with God. I want to talk about today dual citizenship and suffering in the workplace. Suffering in the workplace. The most amazing thing to me about this book, about this book, about this chapter, chapter two, been here eight weeks. It's like a Christian, it's like a manual for living. Um, I don't know about you, but as an unbeliever, I had a problem with authority. <laughs> Most believers have problems. Unbelievers and believers <laughs> have problems w- with authority. We do. We struggle with it. We, we struggle with submitting, following instructions, uh, keeping our mouth shut. When somebody does something wrong to us, we ready to, we, 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 we'll just, you know, and, and I, I, I caught myself the last couple of weeks as I was getting ready to, I was, you know, I work on these things, you know, I work on these things weeks in advance. So I can practice it first, Ezra 710, see. And I thought about it. I said, man, why do I have such a hard time with authority? Why do we all have a hard time submitting to those who are on authority? Now, some of us would say, I don't have a problem with that. I'm good with that. You're good until they mistreat you. Come on now. And you ever notice that the moment something goes wrong, you're ready to, you're ready to blast. You're ready to like, kind of like, you know, especially if you're mistreated. Right. And, 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 and with this, when we started this, we talked about rise, right? That's what we're talking about rising, right? Throughout this whole series on rise with the injustice and the George Floyd and all the other stuff that I've preached through, right? Here we are. And the issue is this, that the world is going to be the world. Let me give you a phrase. The unfairness in the devil's world. Many companies just choose or overlook certain employees, even if they work hard. Amen. Even if that person is an asset to the organization, sometimes that person can be overlooked and mistreated. And then they become easily distracted from the progress in the plan of God. On the other hand, amen, genuine, genuine unfairness does exist, watch this, In every human organization and system. Why? Because of the fall. Sooner or later, every believer on the, or in the momentum line, I'm talking about maturity, will fall victim to an unfair system. Did I make sense? At some point, we will be, we will fall victim to an unfair system. You may be preyed upon by a criminal, for instance, only to discover that when the case comes to trial, that our present ju- ju- jurisdictional structure favors the criminal over the law abiding citizen. Hmm. You may be a superior employee and yet be passed over for an important position. Amen. Given to a less capable person who played politics to get the job. Come on and say amen. You may be a police officer. Amen. In a department that's ran by bad actors. And instead of leadership, 
You find you find your leadership, you find yourself abused and reprimanded and even suspended for actions that you should have been rewarded for. A rotten system creates rotten people and makes victims of those who are honorable. Come on and help me, somebody. A bad system often includes good people. But when they abuse, when they're abused by the system, their attitude, motivation, and integrity need not to be destroyed by the unfairness of suffering. The advancing believer, amen, need not allow the system of testing, watch this, to contribute to your failure. Come on, help me. If a good employee is fired by an unfair boss, what should they do? Should they become bitter? Should they become vindictive? Should they vent to anyone who will listen? Should they take vengeance? Should they seek to vindicate their name? Should they threaten to sue or fall into self-pity? Indeed not. Why? Because as members of the royal family of God, we possess the same power that Christ had when he walked this earth. When they spit on him. When they talked about him, when they lied on him, when they put him before a kangaroo court, guess what? He possessed power. Submission is power, y'all. The next time you go to the store and they do something jacked up and you don't respond, that's you and you're in control. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You were never intended to behave like unbelievers. Come on and say amen, will you please? We were, and I've acted like a non-believer in many situations. In many circumstances. And I've tried to justify, oh, well, you know, everybody do that. No, no, they treated me bad. But when I look at scripture, when I look at, that's why I say this, this is hard right here. This, this right here. This is hard because what he's asking to do, but it's not hard if you're in the spirit. We were never intended to behave as unbelievers. Even though you're mistreated, you still have an opportunity to turn it into a substantial victory. Come on and say amen. You still have the opportunity to turn it into a victory. I'll say this to you. I would be doing you a disservice if I only preached passages that I like. But if you notice in the last eight weeks, we've been walking through, amen, we've been walking through this text, this this book, this chapter. And this is one particular part of the chapter that I don't like. Because it challenges me to say to myself, I I, I thought about it, I'm like, man, if somebody come up, run upon me, what am I going to do? You see what I'm saying? If, I, if I'm if i at the job and you say some crazy stuff to me and you're my boss, right? I'm like thinking to myself, now you, man, I'm going to go off on you, man. I'm going to tell you, man, shoot, I'm going to fire me another job right now. You know what I'm saying? Forget that. I would look it anyways. You know what I mean? <laughs> Little did you know. But watch this. But my attitude that I was going to work with contribute. To why I'm in this truck, I'm in this situation, right? But then I'm thinking God has a camera on me 
And he and listen and, and watch this now. We throw pity parties and we start talking crazy, right? Watch this. After we get fired, it was them, it was them, it was them, it was them. But your attitude was funky. And some of us were going to work, but we're halfway holding on right right now. We're halfway at the thread, but they're getting ready to put you out. They, they're like, man, I, man, listen, because you're letting off some toxic stuff with your words, with your looks, with your attitude. Every believer has a choice how to respond in actuality. Now we have an example and we have an instructions how to respond to adverse situations. Many of us lose our testimony, not at home, but at the job. People don't want to follow us. They don't. For real, like, shoot, they better not come say nothing to me today. Shoot, I, I'm not today. I ain't playing today. I'm walking up in here. They shoot, cut, say, just say something. I'm waiting for them to say something today. Amen. I shoot, they better have my money in that bank on Friday. I'll tell you that much. And you on the internet all day. You ain't did now work. You ain't did a now work. But guess what? You you mad and upset. Now, I'm talking to Christians. I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking about Christians. And I looked at this, and I'm saying to myself, one-third of the society was was enslaved, and Christians were enslaved. But I can imagine that why Peter wrote this. Peter wrote this because a lot of these Christians started complaining, talking about, man, shoot, if I didn't follow Jesus, this wouldn't have happened to me. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> I would be in a better position. Why, God? Why? 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 Why go to church? when all I get is bad why do this and everything seems go people are always tripping with me and all this other stuff and listen saints we say we are believers we my, I'll give you an illustration the other day I was at home and, and, and I was having a conversation with my girls and I was talking to them very soft and very kind and I was telling them about some important things that I believe that was important Amen. And, 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 and I was talking to them real soft and kind. And then one of my daughters, I'm not going to say who it is, said, Daddy, you're not talking this nice because we got company in the house, do you? <laughs> I thought to myself, yep. But, uh, <laughs> but it's amazing when people are around, right? How we talk, right? How our attitude's a little bit different. But let people, let them leave. One third of the population of the Roman Empire was slaves. And the percentage of Christians who were slaves may have been even higher. Peter challenged these Christian slaves to a new behavior. I'm challenging you to a new behavior. He says, servants, be now listen, if you the boss, this, this, this applies to you too. Cause you don't just get to use your power to suppress people. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do that next week. <laughs> he says, servants, be submissive. Now let's talk about this word submission for a minute. He says, be submissive to your master with all, what? That word respect means what? Reference. You don't have to like them. Well, you got to like them. But you got to reverence them. Scriptural submission, heard, means this. You ready? Oh, you're going to catch this. Ready? Let's play a little baseball. Catch this. Scriptural. Now watch this. They were not voluntary slaves. 
They were forced into slavery. Can you imagine living there? Let's transport ourselves there. Man, please. I, shoot, I ain't. Shoot, I ain't man, submissive. What, man, what kind of Bible? What, what, what you talking about, Peter? You, come, come where I'm at and you see what I'm going through. I get this all the time in counseling. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't. <laughs> Amen. But I know you can make it through if you choose to do the right thing. If you choose to live God's word. He says script. So, so first thing is, and you put it up. So, first thing is scriptural submission. Stay where God placed you. Scriptural, listen, you here putting the application here, putting the application there, doing this, putting your resume on monster.com and this.com and that.com. But until you change your attitude, boo, you just taking it to a new place. That's all you're doing. And when that boss start tripping, you right back to where you were because you didn't learn the lesson in the first place that God placed you. I had to learn what humility was. Scriptural submission literally means this. Under God's arrangement. It's an orderly arrangement. Under what? God's arrangement. Biblical submission is not subservience. It is done willingly unto God. In this way. God transforms each person who's living under that submission. Lord have mercy. I thought y'all were going to shout on that one. It is God's arrangement. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Boo, God put you there under that person. He arranged it like that. Now all of a sudden you don't like your husband, but guess what? God placed you under him. Now all of a sudden you don't like the boss who you used to chop it up with, but now you don't like them. But watch this. No amount of suffering will break you if the Lord placed you under that arrangement. And the moment you move yourself from being submissive, it is, it will fall apart. See, because submission keeps it together. God knows What he was doing when he arranged you where you were. So many people quit jobs. Right? Not because of the job, because of, because of the boss. If you leave your job because of your boss, it's you. As a believer. Listen, we focus so much on suffering and not on what God may be doing. God is using this tyrant to change you. To make you better. To teach you how to say yes sir, no sir. To handle pressure. So that that thing inside of you, that pride that want to push up in you, can leave you. Why? Coming under the Lord's arrangement, biblical submission, watch this, watch this. It, it brings true dignity when done under Christ's lordship. Think about this for a minute. If I, if I take control of the situation, right? And I don't let God take control of it. It's going to happen again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Listen, it's done voluntarily. And therefore, it's intentional. Watch this. It's intentional knowing that it's working out not just for your earthly good, but your eternal good. Watch this. Let's watch this. Watch. This word submissive, it, it's in the middle voice. The middle voice, not the passive voice, submit for yourself. Passive voice. Choose to submit, not to be forced to submit. So a lot of people say this, but I do right, but they keep treating me bad. You didn't stay long enough to see what God was going to do to them. You didn't stay there long enough to watch God maneuver. 
Hey, come on, help me somebody. You didn't stay there long enough. Watch this. The word submission in the ancient term, it, it is a military general arranging his soldiers in the order that he chooses. So when God put you there, he had a plan. And the plan was to promote you, but you took it personal. Oh, I wish I had somebody. No Christian. Remember this. No Christian can be used by anybody but God. So when they think they're taking advantage of you, they ain't taking advantage of you. No Christian can ever be used by God, by by anybody, but God. If any man be in Christ, hey, all things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who's living in me. So you're not taking advantage of me. You're taking advantage of Christ. But listen, Christ can handle whatever situation you got going on in the workplace. Look what he says. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect. Not only, see, we pick and choose. Those who are good and just, you know, those who go, oh, yeah, that's my, we we going to lunch. I can't stand that fool over there. He always want to tell me what to do. He don't do no work all day. Now all of a sudden you become the critic. You become the evaluator. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, like, like you, he said, not, not only to, do, listen, this is hard stuff. It's hard, but God showed me something. I can't be used by nobody. But if you put me under this kind of boss, God, you know what you need to take out of me. Because see, this flesh, man. This flesh got some stuff inside of it that need to come out. And I need it to come out, but under submission, I'm being, watch this, I'm becoming stronger. But God is also restructuring me. He's stripping me. If I could shut my mouth, just shut my mouth. I pray today, Lord, just tell me, help me to shut my mouth, Lord. Please. Please help. The other day I was on the phone. Lady went off. I said, "Shut my mouth." I didn't fight back. I didn't say, "But." But you don't understand. Look at the person who vexes you as God's way of humbling you. Submit. He says, "Submit to the authority first, But now it's more personal because you spend more time at the job. But remember, they were not voluntary slaves. They were forced into slavery. Not only to those who are good and gentle, but to those who are unreasonable. Let me tell you about this word unreasonable real quick. The word unreasonable it comes from a word means it's a curve in the spine. That's the picture of the word. What you call that disease you get in your spine? That word, right? That, that's what it means. It's a disease. The word means, you ready for this? To be crooked. You, you're spineless. In other words, that's what it means. It means to be spineless. You're working for a spineless, crooked person, and he says, submit. That's, that's what the, that's what the word pictures. When you come to the realization that your loyalty is really to God and not to them, and the more you submit to those who mistreat you, the more you see God at work in you. The moment you retaliate, watch this, watch this, you place yourself outside of the orderly arrangement. It's the same thing in marriage. Uh oh, I'm gonna get to that. Now that. So you got so many marriages ain't making it because you know why? Because some people don't want to submit. 
Oh, let me, let me. That's a harsh word in certain communities. <laughs> you mean I got to give up? No, it's not. It's an orderly arrangement. It's how God sets things up. Same thing at work. So here's the thing. If you can't submit to your boss, what makes you think you're going to submit to a man? And you mistreat them. Matter of fact, your boss scared of you. <laughs> when your boss see you coming, your boss go in the other direction. I know i seen stuff like that. Happen. Your boss be like, see, I ain't. And, and the reason why you're still there, because <laughs> they don't want to go through all that hassle with you. But, but on Sunday, you're in the choir. Oh, yeah, on Sunday, you you speaking in tongues, falling and flapping on the floor. <laughs> you can speak in so many tongues, you got about 15 different ways to speak in tongues. But on but a Monday morning, you're like the dog Vader, man. You, people don't want to be around you because why? Because you you got this thing about you. Nobody gonna take advantage of me, and I ain't submitting to nobody. Suffering in the workplace. He says not only to those who are good and gentle. But to those who are spineless, to those who are crooked. But let me tell you what it does for you. Give it to me. Strength. Strength. Remember your loyalty is to the Lord. So when you encounter a bad actor at the job, you look at him like, and even in business, you know, doing business, same thing. If I have a client, I'm submitting myself to, I used to get mad at my clients. Ah, they're going to ask me. I already, I already did it. That's true. They're going to ask me to do, redo some stuff. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, man, listen, I, I'm the boss. You know what I mean? You know, but when I have a client, I realize I got to submit to that client. And, and it's crazy. Because some of my, I remember one client went off on him, and then we become good friends because, because I had to go back and apologize. He said, like, hold on, man, hold on, man. I hung up on him. And then he, then he called me back, and we, you know, we went back and forth a little bit. He said, man, how are you going to hang up on me? And you're working for me. <laughs> this is back in the day, you know. See, I had to learn this stuff. You see, because I haven't always been a very submissive slave, you see. Why? Because let me tell you something. Pride is so deeply lodged inside of all of us. You see, and sometimes it comes across as false modesty. In other words, you, you're speaking real nice to me, but then when you go to the, to the job, they know you. They know you because you let your guard down. All right. Verse 19. He says, now this is the part that really gets me. See, all these prosperity preachers, I want them to, I want them to call me. For real. Because they always talk about favor, the favor of God, favor of God, favor, favor of God. Favor of God. If you give $100, favor of God is going to be out. That, that ain't how you get favor. That ain't how you get favor. Here's how you get favor. You stick to it. You submit yourself in a bad situation. You stay there. And you watch God work on your character. This finds what, Victoria? Is, is that the word? I mean, I'm just saying, is that the word? But see, here's the thing. Watch this. The commercialized favor, you ain't got to go through nothing to get it. That, that type of favor, you ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is throw a few dollars at it. And guess what? You got the favor. I got the favor. Ooh, I'm walking in the favor. You ain't walking in nothing. 
And the reason I say you're not walking in nothing is because you were given nothing and you didn't have to work hard to get it. So watch this. You thought you could buy it. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. Oh, I wish I had somebody today. He says, this finds favor what? This finds favor. Now watch this. Let me tell you what the word favor really is. The word favor really means grace. That's all it is. Kairos. Watch this. Favor conveys God freely extending favor towards us or grace. Literally, it's grace leaning on you. When he says he gives favor. This finds favor. God's grace in the conscience leads us to affirm that every tribulation yields equal rewards. Because the Lord has purposely prearranged what you're going through. I want the favor of God. But do you want to pay the price to get it? God is not going to entrust more to you. If your attitude is not right. So the next thing is. He says. He says. If. Yeah you can put it up there. Fred. The next thing you got to do is seek. The what? The grace of God. Lord, I need your grace because right now I want to throw this table. I really do. Okay, I really do. But watch this, you ready? Now let me break down the conscience real quick. He says, if for the sake of conscience towards a person, a person bears up under suffering when suffering unjustly, right? If the Christian workman fails to live for Christ by striking back then he's failing to please God and watch this and his conscience is going to bug him his conscience is going to convict him his conscience is going to cause more that's really what happened that's why after you go off you call back and they don't answer? Oh, Lord Jesus. Because your conscience is... E- he says, if for conscience sake. Watch this. And then when you retaliate, your fellowship with God then is broken. And now you're living a lie and you're walking contrary to God's standard. But when we suffer unjustly, we must seek God's grace and wait for it. Look for it. Seek it. Believe it. And we shall receive it. Lord, I need your grace right now. You know what grace is? You don't deserve it. But God's grace steps in. And does what, watch this, what you were going to do. But he does it ten times better. Could it be the last incident you suffer when you retaliated? You lost the favor of God and now you're left to clean up the mess on your own because now you're by yourself because you have exited the winner's circle. And now you're by yourself trying to figure it out until you repent and come back in and then you got to watch out for your mental attitude sins and then you say, God, okay, God, I'm sorry. God, Okay, I'm going to, okay, sir, I'm sorry. I ain't going to tell y'all what I did. Uh, verse 20. This is before I got saved. Say this before I understand all this stuff. See, I didn't, I didn't want to submit to nobody. Nobody. No job. Nobody could tell me what to do. And guess what? If you treat me good, I treat you better. You know what I mean? But here's the thing. But I realized God showed me something through this verse. He says, hey, listen. When people treat you bad, you ought not to retaliate. You have to hold your peace. 
and stay in the will of God and receive his favor. Can you imagine re- receiving? Watch this. Watch this now. Watch this now. Would you rather receive man's favor for being a man pleaser? Mm-hmm. Or be, or receive God's favor for being mistreated. Watch this. They think they taking advantage of you because you double working and triple working. They think they take advantage. But God said, I got you. I got you. I got grace. You see, you don't see what's coming next. They can't sleep at night, but you sleep well. Oh yeah. They got all kinds of, they got addictions. Come on, they got, they got fractions, they got all kinds of issues going on. But here you are, double worked, overworked, underworked, and guess what? You at peace. This sounds crazy to the unbeliever, but to the believer, it is how we find favor. So don't try to tell me I can pay for favor. You come and put a hundred dollars here at the altar, that ain't going to get you no favor. No, no, no. You suffer and you go through it and you look at your boss differently. You're like, okay, God, you arranged me here. All right, now he tripped out, okay, right? He tripped. Now, as long as not, they're not asking you to cook the books, steal, do anything that's against God's word, you have to submit. Amen. Look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, he says, for conscience sake, towards God. You see that? Towards God. Watch what he says. That you that, that a person bears up under, same word, sorrows when suffered unjustly. What does a person do when they're treated unjustly? Oh my gosh. And some of us, we are super melodramatic with that boy. They did me wrong. They did me wrong. <laughs> Listen, chill, will you please? <laughs> if they fired you and you weren't supposed to be fired, God going to deal with them. Come on, say amen. God is going to deal. One of the one of the things that many of us, all of us are afraid of is losing our job. Who do you fear more? But if you change your attitude, you may not have that fear anymore. See, authorities were not given so that you would fear them. That authorities are for those who do wrong. But for those who do right, it's for a blessing, not a curse. Amen. Y'all still with me? Look, look at verse 20. He says, for what credit is there? He ain't got no credit for that. See, because one day you'll stand before God. When you sin uh, and are harshly treated, you endure it. He said, listen, when you wrong, right? With patience. When you, when you do wrong, you accept the consequence. Right? So why not do right and accept the consequence? So the next thing is a sinful reaction forfeits the favor. See, it, it does no good. There's no glory if you suffer for some some wrongdoing that you've done. But when we retaliate, when we're wrong. Without giving God an opportunity, come on somebody, to vindicate us, we forfeit the blessing. Listen, you didn't even give God a chance. You just opened your mouth. (laughs) You're not even praying for your boss. They can't say one thing to you. You ready? Poof. Putting ourselves in a compromising position, and we'll see what we're doing. We're ruining our testimony. Lastly, he said, but if, if, and it is true, first class condition. Come on, say amen, will you? He says, if, when you do what is right, how do you get tired of doing right? Pastor, I'm tired of doing right. Oh. I'm tired, I'm tired of doing right. I'm tired of doing right. Who are you suffering for? I'm not, I'm just saying, right? Like, like this scripture really messed me up because I'm like, man, this is hard. (laughs) 
And I'm telling you, the Lord keeps telling me, it's not hard, Derek, if you stay in the Spirit. It's not hard, Derek, if you apply the word. It's not hard, Derek. Guess what? If, if you do what is right, submit. He says, but, but, but if you do what is right and suffer for it, suffer for it what? See, he says, when you do wrong, you endure it with, with patience. But when you do right and you suffer for it, he said you patiently endure. Hupermeno means that you're covered with self-control. You wait. You endure. Why? It You endure it because this finds what? This finds favor. First of all, he talks about having the favor. But now he's talking about finding favor with God. Who rules the world? Who's the real owner of the company? Who writes the check? Who holds the world in his hands? Come on, somebody. Who scoops out every valley? Who caps off every mountain with snow? Who throws up stars like daffodils and, come on, somebody, and who, who can make a way out of nowhere? Who sees what you're going through right now? Who knows every intricate details of your life and he can make a way out of no way for you. God does. So God, I want your favor. I'm not asking. I'm not running recklessly into, <laughs> into suffering, but I'm saying God, right now what I'm going through, I'm having a hard time with people. I'm having a hard time submitting. So I'm asking you, Lord, to give me the Patience, which the Holy Spirit can give me. Watch this. And how do you get that? How do you suffer, Pastor? How do I do that? The last point is self-denial. Self-denial. Listen. He did it for us. We should do it for Him. The suffering was never about you. It was never about you. On Wednesday... The U.S. forced the Chinese consulate here in Houston, Texas to shut down. They forced them out to leave the country within 72 hours for they had accused them of spying on the stuff in the medical center, stealing intellectual property. The Chinese consulate came out and said, it's unfair. Because usually, if you have, if you bring a charge against somebody, you got to first present the proof. I wish I had somebody. But without proof, Donald Trump decided that anybody from China falls in the same boat. The ambassador... They were not given any time to pack. They were given 72 hours to leave this country peacefully. So what did they do? They got in the middle of the courtyard. They took all their files. And they burnt it up. You see, the problem is they have kids here. They have built a life here in this country. But they're caught up in the middle of politics. They are ambassadors in this country for their country. We, hallelujah, as Christians, we're no different. We are ambassadors of Christ. And at any moment at your job, They can come to you and decide that they're done with you. You may suffer 
hardship under their regime. But you got to remember that God will grant you favor for your suffering. God will vindicate you. God will bring you to a place of favor. And one day you're going to look back and say, look where he has brought me from. You're not wishing bad on them. Because God already got a plan for you. And so as I close today, I encourage you. That whatever suffering you're going through at the workplace. Endure. Lord, I don't want to come out of the arrangement. Because if I do, I'm going to mess up your plan. You never know. By them mistreating you, the owner is going to see it. (laughs) And then replace them. And put you in that position. God's got a way. Of turning things around. It ain't karma. It's favor. I thank God. As a believer. We got to take the good things. But we also got to take the hard things. I pray for you today. I thank God. Amen. Amen. But I'm praying that in every relationship that you have, you understand that if you're in a position of a subordinate, amen, if you're in a position, amen, where you have to submit to someone, that you do that. Amen. You do it for the Lord's sake. For this finds favor with God.